Hello, I'm Rashmi Tekkat. Along with my teammates Sanjana Podar and Pratik Baird, we will be taking forward the NAND to Tetris project from where we left off in the previous video. So till now, we have covered 5 projects of NAND to Tetris. Coming on to project 6, Assembly Language and Assemblers. Now what is an assembler? Till our last video, we have programmed in machine language, but never programmed in binary code. We did it using an assembly language. So there is a gap in between and it is supposed to be filled by a simple software program called an assembler. So an assembler takes input of a file which is written in assembly language and gives out the output in binary format that can directly be executed in our computer. The assembler helps in translating the program from assembly language to machine language which can be easily interpreted then by the hack computer. So what is the logic behind the assembler? First is, it reads the next assembly language command. Example, if the next command is load r1,18, it ignores the white spaces and reads it this into an array of characters is shown. Then, it breaks it into different fields that is composed of. Then it combines these codes into a single machine language command as shown and then it outputs this machine language command. The hack language consists of three parts. A instructions, C instructions, and symbols. We will talk about this in detail in a while. So for translating into machine language program, there are three things which we are supposed to handle. First is the white space, second are the instructions, and the third is symbols. So we have to translate the below mentioned cases to machine code lines to actually implement the binary form of it. A instructions come up in symbolic syntax and there is an equivalent binary syntax to it. So for handling A instructions, uh, if a value is a decimal constant, generate the equivalent 15-bit binary constant and append 0 opcode to convert it into a 16-bit binary code. C instructions are made up of symbolic syntax and binary syntax and it is also provided with a set of tables that describe the mapping between the former and the latter. Coming on to handling different types of symbols, now before that, let us jump onto a small topic of symbol table first to understand this very well. The so symbol table is a simple and powerful data structure that enables us to solve and use symbol value pairs. But how do we build a symbol table? Step 1. Construct empty symbol table. Step 2. Populate it with all predefined symbols which are specified in the language. Step 3. Look for label declarations in your lines of code, that is, Look for codes which start with left parenthesis. Step 4. Keep track of real instructions, skipping label declarations and white spaces. Moving on to handling symbols. There are three types of different symbols. First is predefined symbols. So here the hack language specifications describes 23 predefined symbols, which means that for these 23 symbols, there are values which are already assigned to them. So translating these uh, predefined symbols. What we do is that we replace these predefined symbols with its corresponding values, that is decimal numbers, and then translate these decimal numbers into their binary codes. Label symbols are used to label destination of go-to commands. Now it is declared by pseudo command in parenthesis xyz, where xyz is any sequence of characters within parenthesis. This is also called a pseudo commands because they don't actually generate real code. Meaning, whenever we see this label uh, symbol, we mean to replace it with the address of the memory location that contains the next instruction in the program. The last type of symbol is a variable symbol. So any symbol XYZ in ALP, which is not predefined and it is not accompanied by another label declaration statement is a variable. So if variables are seen for the first time, we assign a unique memory address to it and we replace the variable symbol with its value. So that's it for project number six. In this project, we understood what is the assembler, basic operations on it, and the logic behind it. Then we went into depth with the hack machine language and understood that it consists of three parts, A instructions, C instructions, and symbols, and went into it in detail. Then we got into what all things need to be handled while converting the assembly language program to hack machine code. And we understood that those were white space instructions and symbols. And we also saw how we tackle the problems and how we handle the situations into translating them from assembly language pro program to hack machine code. Thank you. Greetings, sir. 
I am Sanjana and I would like to brief through Project 7 Virtual Machine Part 1. Previously, we have built the host hardware platform. Now, we build the software hierarchy that sits on top of the hardware and enables us to write programs in high level languages like Java. In Project 7 and 8, we build a VM translator that can implement VM codes by translating them into lower level programs written in hack machine language. We have first developed a basic VM translator that is capable of handling VM programs having stack arithmetic commands like add, push, etc. and memory access commands like pointer, segment, etc. This will later be extended into a full-scale virtual machine. The VM translator code is invoked from the terminal along with the file name of the desired VM program visible here to be translated to generate the ASM files. Before translating, all the provided test VM programs here were experimented in the VM emulator like this. In the VM emulator, first the .vme test script is loaded. When we run one step, we can see that the VM program is loaded here. When we run it, we see that the execution is completed and the program to add the two numbers has been performed and the value of 15 is stored. We then use the CPU emulator to test all the translated VM programs as follows. First, we test the stack arithmetic command executed by the simple add.vm program. Here we load the test script, which is visible here. Once we run it, we see that the translated hack machine language code is loaded into the room. Once we run, we see that it is successfully completed and the program to add two constants on the stack is successfully completed with the output of 15 here. Next, we test the arithmetic memory access commands like pointer segment executed by the stack test dot vm program. So we again load the test script we see this test script here when we run one step we see that the hack machine language program is loaded into the room and once we run it we see that it is successfully completed with the execution of push pop operations using the virtual memory segment static. Similarly, all the VM programs are tested and translated successfully using the built VM translator code. In the last project, we saw the implementation of trivial elements of the virtual machine, including the add, subtract, and the OR operations. In this project, we would dive deeper and implement in the implementation of the part of the virtual machine that deals with branching and functions. I am Pratik Pair and I would be demonstrating and explaining the project 8, Virtual Machine Part 2. The objective of the virtual machine is to act as an intermediate stage between high-level language and the machine language. In this project, we have dealt with branching that consists of go to, if go to, and labels and the functions that consist of call, function, and return. We will see the implementation of all these concepts with the help of two projects. The first one is the basic loop. The second one is the Fibonacci series. To demonstrate the working of the loop, 
we select the loop, co loop code and run it in the emulator. In this demonstration, we mainly deal with the go to and label command. Here, the go to command loops back the program to the pointer of the first label. We can see this in action in the emulator where the program loops on the press of the play button and tries to add the sum to the counter. And as we can see, the sum has been computed with the value of each incremental counter. To demonstrate the working of both loops and functions together, we would be presenting the working of the Fibonacci series. In this, each incremental number is the sum of the previous number. We can see that each number loops through and adds itself to the previous number and gives a new output thereby successfully implementing the Fibonacci series and also demonstrating the working of the functions and loop.